The Nintendo 3DS is on life support, with its last gasp of air being the release of the new 2DS XL. Much like when my uncle Roscoe was on his deathbed after getting into a serious horse accident, we don't really know how long the 3DS has left to live. It might die in 2018, possibly 2019. Either way, things aren't looking too good for N-Dog's final handheld. Since most of its games are out already, now's almost as good a time as any to decide what the 10 greatest are. My name's Cameron, and these are my top 11 Nintendo 3DS games of all time. Before I begin, let me just say that this is a personal list, and if your favorite game isn't on here, then it's probably just because I didn't get around to playing it yet. There's way too many games on this handheld for me to have played them all. That being said, let's start off with... Number 11. The first half of Bravely Default. There's a plethora of critically acclaimed RPGs for the 3DS. Sadly, the only one I've had a chance to actually fully complete is Bravely Default. Don't get me wrong, it's a really fun game. I mean, it's on the list after all, so let's go over the positives before talking about why it barely made the cut. The battling's very well thought out, with a fun job system and story that had me with it all the way until the end. And by the end, I mean until halfway through the game when everything gets sullied. Without spoiling anything, Bravely Default has you stuck in a time loop for the entire second half of the game where you have to do the same thing over and over again. To make sure I wasn't making any mistakes, I looked it up online and I I was amazed to find that this game really did consciously decide to have you repeat yourself over and over and over and over and over again. If it wasn't for that fatal flaw and shady, albeit optional, microtransactions, this game would be much higher on the list because other than that one glaring shit on the canvas, this is a masterpiece. While Bravely Default's repetitive nature is painful, the battling was at least fun enough for me to finish the adventure and the final boss was actually cool enough to somewhat redeem the game's shortcomings. Maybe Bravely Second remedies the time warp issue from the first game, but I haven't played that yet so Bravely Default's what I'm gonna be including. Number 10. Resident Evil Revelations. When Resident Evil 4 was released, fans praised Capcom for reinventing the series. Then when Resident Evil 5 came out, people initially praised it, only to change their minds later on in the same way people now hate Skyward Sword despite it getting 10s all over the place when it was released. Fans wanted Capcom to return to its horror roots, and so for this handheld spin-off, Resident Evil made things scary again, with the exception of the cringy parts where you play as Jackass and Grinder. Capcom wanted to save the return of zombies for the underrated main series entry Resident Evil 6, but despite unfamiliar and somewhat bland monsters, this game definitely had me peeing from beginning to end out of sheer spookiness. And rather than rushing forward while blowing everything away, Resident Evil Revelations had me creeping through inch by inch while being on edge for jump scares. There's still plenty of action, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And this is the first handheld game to my knowledge that was so good it was actually ported into home consoles relatively untouched, further solidifying the fact that handhelds don't really need to be two separate entities from home consoles anymore, and that graphics in 2017 are good enough all around to the point where everything looks fine even if the specs are at the bare minimum. It might make graphics elitist a little pee for me to say that, but it's true. I mean, it's being ported to current gen consoles yet again after all, and nobody's gonna complain that it doesn't hold up graphically. If a game can look like this on the 3DS without anybody complaining that the graphics aren't up to par, then I think the days of handhelds being watered down consoles with the only upside being that they're portable or dead in the water. All I'm really trying to say is that I'm digging the console handheld hybrid concept, and I'd like to think that this is the first game that made people realize that there's no reason for a company to have two separate consoles out at the same time competing with each other anymore. Number 9. Paper Mario Sticker Star I know a lot of people watching this are probably gonna want to punch my ass for including this game, because many of you feel that Paper Mario trying new things that don't follow the traditional RPG format that the first two games started is further burying the possibility of the series returning to its roots. While I completely agree that I prefer the traditional Paper Mario battles over the sticker system, I can't help but appreciate this game for what it is, and what it is is a creative, fun, addictive, and hilarious experience. Just don't be a butt wagon and compare this to the first two games of the series, and I'd wager you'll enjoy it. Number 8. Hey, Pikmin. I know this game just came out, but I had to include it in here somehow. A lot of people were babies about the announcement of a 2D Pikmin game because fuck Nintendo for trying something new, right? However, just because this isn't Pikmin 4 doesn't mean you won't have a great time. This game checks all the Pikmin marks off on the box from the clever solutions required to make progress, calming music, character, and overall atmosphere. Hey, Pikmin is the perfect way to convert the series to be played in short bursts on the go. Number 7. Mario Kart 7. Now that we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe being superior and portable on the Switch, this game doesn't hold up quite as well. Even though it's missing the grits and glamour of its updated sequel, you can still have an ass of a time here. It's pretty much the same game as Mario Kart 8, just with fewer features and more blue shells. Ah! Fucking weenies! Number 6. Super Mario 3D Land. Back when Super Mario 64 was released, I admit that I was a tad disappointed since the simplicity of the 2D Mario series was lost and I was a dumbass little kid. Nowadays, I'd much prefer a Mario Galaxy or Odyssey but still though, there's always gonna be a place on my ass for simple mindless Mario fun where you just run to the end of the stage. And if that's what you're looking for, then Super Mario 3D Land delivers. 
Number 5. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon While the original Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube is popular today, it was considered a flop at the time it came out. Everybody at school would just be a dick and talk about how it's not a Mario game and wrote it off as trash like it was Mario's Missing or something like that. Thankfully though, fans have since become more open-minded to games trying new things and up to the point where we could have a long-awaited sequel to this GameCube launch title. Rather than exploring one giant mansion, this game split up into separate areas which rubs some people the wrong way, but everything about this game tickles my fun hole from the atmosphere, gameplay, fun bosses, humor, and even Luigi's random crap. Surprise. Hopefully this series lives on, and I'm sure it will, with the release of the Luigi's Mansion arcade game. On a side note, if you haven't played the arcade, then I recommend that you get your cute little ass to Dave and Buster's and try it out with a butter a hot date. Number 4, Super Smash Bros. This may be a watered down version of Super Smash Bros for the Wii U, but it's not as inferior as you may think. The graphics may be a little more cartoony, but the fact that this is portable more than makes up for it, especially considering that Smash Bros is cartoony by default anyway. The online might not be very effective, but the core game is as solid as an armadillo's peen. Number 3, Pokemon X and Y. For years and years, Pokemon fans have wanted to see the series transition into 3D. And while the game more or less moves in the same grid-like style as before, it sure looks a whole lot nicer, and being able to choose a starter from the first generation in addition to your new starter was a nice touch. Mega Evolutions are a lot of fun, and instead of cramming way too many new Pokemon to keep up with, Game Freak took a less is more approach with Ken Sugimori returning as the artist for the first time since Gold and Silver. I'm including X and Y over Sun and Moon because it was just more impactful and felt more fresh to me. Dickhead. Number 2, Fire Emblem Awakening. I know that Fire Emblem Fates might technically be better since it's two separate games that combine into one long adventure, but those are two games and the fact that it takes so long to complete makes me prefer Awakening just a pubic more. Besides, Fire Emblem Awakening was the game that pretty much saved the entire series with its immense success ensuring the franchise's future. This game introduced the waifu system that became a series staple, and raising your dumbass kids made things way more interesting with many different possibilities as to how different characters would have various kinds of offspring, and the fact that choosing a different Hunker Bay would result in different cheering being bored meant more replayability in the long run. Plus, with the addition of Street Pass allowing you to battle other people in their own bases and Amiibos bringing back classic characters make this my favorite game in the series and second favorite on the 3DS. But as for my favorite 3DS game, let's move on with number one. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds As if you didn't guess this would be number one already, A Link Between Worlds just might be the greatest Zelda game ever made. It's definitely my favorite 2D adventure in the series. This game returns to the series roots by giving you the freedom to complete dungeons in any order you please, and in my opinion, it does an even better job of this than Breath of the Wild. Although to be fair, that game is much larger. However, I still think that whatever Zelda game comes after Bajwa could learn a thing or two from A Link Between Worlds to go the extra mile and truly be a fully-fledged Zelda game as opposed to a Zelda-themed open-world adventure. And if you think I'm saying Breath of the Wild's a bad game, then shut your butt and look at how many hours I put into it. Plus, I bought the DLC, so obviously I loved it. I just think that A Link Between Worlds is the greatest pure Zelda experience in the series and the best game on the 2DS slash 3DS. Let me know what you think are some important games I left off in the comments below because I'm certain there's some great stuff I've yet to play and I want you to let me know what 3DS games I should prioritize getting to next. If you like this video, then press the like button, subscribe if you're new, and check some of my other videos out. My name's Cameron and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.